Hey there once again YouTube, it's me Ben Ferriolo, I'm back once again. I uh, just want to let you guys know I did do a post on the Hawaii blog on my website under the Seismic Events drop down menu by location Hawaii. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. I show the plots and the usual seismic audio to the, to the July 4th through 5th spasmodic tremor events. There are only three during that time period but I had to make a post on it nonetheless. However, in this post, I delve into uh, what is going on with the spasmodic tremor events, uh, where they are occurring in Hawaii, and my observations, eight of my observations of spasmodic tremor, and I'm going to sort of use this post as a go-to post for people who want to learn the basics about a volcanic spasmodic tremor in Hawaii, and what it means, and what it could mean for the future of volcanic activity on the big island of Hawaii. And here we are also on my website under the more drop down menu under videos multimedia under my videos where I post most of my YouTube videos on here not in YouTube format on the uh, Weebly sites HD video format so you can just watch this video you can even download it if you want there's of course a part section to this video as well this uh, dives into the magnitude 7.1 in California and how it's a strike slip earthquake and that's what they're stating it was. Um, and how it could be connected to future volcanic activity in the area because of the local relationship of regional fault systems in the area um, connected to the magma chamber that underlies the coastal volcanic field. I even uh, include a pretty good publication put out by the USGS a while back about the coastal volcanic field and the magma chamber that underlies the area. And also, it contains possibly a mantle plume. I mean, they didn't use the phrase mantle plume, but there's supposedly an upper mantle reservoir um, about 35 kilometers in depth underneath the coastal area, and how the magma chamber, the upper crustal magma chamber right beneath the surface, could be connected to regional tectonics. And if that is true, then the current seismic activity is very concerning for the coastal area. But even if uh, the, the magnitude 7.1 and the 6.4 and, and the trillions... The crazy amount of aftershocks, even if that would lead to volcanic activity, I do not believe the volcanic eruptions would be that explosive because they have been primarily lava flows in historical times in this area. They really would not be super explosive. They wouldn't be too, too crazy or too much of a danger, but still would be, would, it still would be interesting to see any type of volcanic activity in this area. So I'll leave a link to this in the description box below along with my spasmodic tremor post. That you should go check out if you want to learn the details about spasmodic tremor in Hawaii and what it means and this video as well. Again the magnitude 7.1 in the current seismicity occurred just south of the coastal volcanic field with a lot of the seismicity now spreading into the volcanic field itself. Now you can see the image right here I'm showing you is split in two. Here is showing the same area as over here. This is before the earthquake. Look right here there's nothing right? Well now look in this area. Notice that there is a big crack that satellite imagery did detect, guys. And look at this. This is like, I don't know what that is, a house or something. But look how big that is. That's a big crack associated with the magnitude 7.1 that did strike just south of Coastal Volcanic Field and north of Ridgecrest, California. Thank God it did not kill anybody. Thank God. But, oh, also they have another image right here. Uh, from ABC News, apparently a young girl stuck her foot in the crack. I do not know if this is exactly from that area. It looks like it is. It definitely looks like it is. But yeah, I would not do that. Just saying. Here's another image of the cracking in the area due to the magnitude 7.1. Here's another image. Kind of tiny. Can't really see that very well. And here's another image right here. Good luck if you drop your phone in that, dude. Yeah, would never find it ever again. Now we're going to take a look at some of the recent earthquakes that are going on in the world. There's a 5.7 in Iran. Uh, let's see, let's go to California just real quick. I want you to notice something in regards to the seismicity ongoing down here near the coastal volcanic field and the ridge crest area. Notice Long Valley Caldera is still seismically quiet and so far deformation remains somewhat normal in the area of this pretty large supervolcano. However, they did report a 1.3 at 0.6 kilometers in depth. And a 2.0 at 10.4 kilometers in depth right on the southern edge of Long Valley Caldera. And then another 0.8 earthquake underneath Mammoth Mountain at a shallow 2.7 kilometers in depth. And we're still seeing thousands of earthquakes, guys. I mean, if you look at the seismic data, and we're not going to look at that quite yet today. Uh, but if you look at the seismic data, I suggest using the SEDC data select URL builder. 
Um, and in my last video, if you did see my last video, remember how we talked about the relationship between local strike slip tectonics and the magma chamber that underlies COSO. Now, I want you to notice something. Here is the line of aftershocks because of the magnitude 7.1. Apparently, that's supposedly a big fault with a little bit of swarming right in this area right down here. And we do have swarming in the northern part, uh, the northwestern part of the coastal volcanic field right here. Now, I want you to notice gap in the middle right here. See that gap? Right just, I'm going to say, east, northeast of Little Lake, California. Right here. Why is there a gap in seismicity? We see seismicity up here occurring as part of an ongoing earthquake swarm, possibly connected to underground magmatic activity responding to the intense seismic activity just to the southeast. But why is there a gap right here? Coincidentally, this gap is also almost the same exact location as the possible magma chamber underneath the coastal volcanic area. I believe this is showing the magma chamber right here. And you can take a look at this publication. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Talking about the single chamber silicic magma system inferred from shear wave discontinuities of the crust and uppermost mantle, coastal geothermal area. Uh, let's go all the way back down and we'll look at the displacements right here. And notice how, okay, so the seismicity was trending this way, right? There's a big gap of seismicity right here, coincidentally, likely where the magma chamber is actually located. And we'll go back. Let's show you this. All right, let's go to satellite. Maybe that will show you it a little bit better. Here, let's see. Let's go to satellite. Will that show it a little bit? Nah, that won't. Look at that old lava flow right there. Uh, go street. Maybe this will show it a little better. Eh, no, it won't. I don't know if you can see it, but notice how there's a line of mountains right here and old volcanic activity in this area. You see that right there, how the seismicity stops right here. There's a big gap, and then seismicity continues to the north-northwest. Well, again, that area right there is this area right here. Coincidentally, where the magma chamber likely is located is where we are seeing zero, almost zero, seismic activity at all. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Now let's move on to something else real quick. All right, here we are at the Mount Hood Stratovolcano in northern Oregon, which is near the border of southern Washington State and northern Oregon on the west coast of the United States. It is a stratovolcano on the Cascade Range. Now notice, we have an earthquake swarm ongoing at Mount Hood. I believe it has been pretty calm for the past few hours. I do not believe the earthquake swarm is still ongoing, actually. Uh, it started at about 2 UTC on the 8th, so a little over 24 hours ago. A little bit more than 24 hours, probably like 27 hours ago or so, that's when it started. And 212, 302, 348, and then there was a big gap of about 4 hours or so. Then at 743, we saw a big increase in seismic activity for Mount Hood. So there has been an increase, 18 reported for about the past 27 hours as of 727 p.m. Pacific Time, July 8th, 2019. I thought that was very interesting, and it's occurring just on the south, southwest section of, under the base of Mount Hood, where a lot of historical swarms have actually taken place at Mount Hood in this location right here. I, there's no sign of it erupting right now, but I just want to let you guys know, just in case if something happens, you never know. You never know in this crazy world, guys. Um, so, I thought that was very interesting. Again, this is probably not the largest earthquake storm ever to hit this area, but it is interesting nonetheless, especially since Mount Hood is usually very, very silent. But there is one thing to note. Here we are at the SeattleTimes.com, and Mount Hood fault could trigger large earthquake, researchers say. This was originally published on October 22nd, 2018. So this is basically some new information that is coming to light about Mount Hood. Researchers say active fault lines on Mount Hood could potentially trigger a 7.2 magnitude earthquake that could reach Portland. KGWTV reports the recently discovered fault lines to the north, south, and southwest. Interesting to note. Oh, whoops, my bad. Interesting to know most of the earthquakes are occurring on the south-southwest portion of the base. Likely connected to the fault system, but you never know. Could be related to the magmatic system as well. Ian Maiden of the Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries. Man, this is making my computer slow down. Jeez. And Ashley Strig of Portland State University found the fault lines during an analysis with new imaging technology. The fault lines were verified through field research. Strake says the quake would be a short crustal earthquake, and it would be strong enough to knock you off your feet. 
probably if you're in the immediate vicinity of the earthquake. Strake says the Portland area would see strong ground motions and would suffer liquefaction damage along waterfront areas. Wow! So what type of damage could that do to the actual volcano itself and the magmatic system which underlies Mount Hood? I thought that was very interesting. So we're going to take a look at the July 8, 2019 earthquake swarm just south-southwest of Mount Hood, right down in this area. We're going to take a look at it in the seismic program swarm from the closest seismic station, which supposedly was TIMB in the CC network, short period vertical, no location code given, so it would be dash dash. Also, the largest earthquake they're reporting for this earthquake swarm at Mount Hood was 1.6 at 3 kilometers in depth. Then we had a 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. So nothing too, too crazy. Notice the depths are primarily... We had a few shallow ones. There's a 1.8 kilometers in depth. Negative 0.1 kilometers in depth. Remember, 0 kilometers in depth is almost always sea level. So even though something occurs negative... Remember, earthquakes cannot occur above the ground, guys. But if something occurs above sea level but still under the ground, it would register, uh, excuse me, register as a negative magnitude. So we had pretty shallow, very close to the surface, going all the way as deep as, let's see, the deepest one was, I believe, uh, I believe it was this one, 4.1 kilometers in depth. So all of them are still pretty shallow. So let's take a look at it in the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with some recent data as of 7.34 p.m. Pacific time, July 8, 2019, from station TIMB in the CC network. Now, first off, you guys are probably going to say, oh my god, what is this? Well, I looked at it. These are not harmonic or volcanic tremor sequences. Notice the frequencies are far too high. If you want to go online and look at some examples of seismic plots of harmonic or volcanic tremor, which I also do have a few on my website, especially under event examples, but you can also find some online of low frequency harmonic volcanic tremor. Um, almost always occurs, uh, I mean, it, it, sometimes they do have some higher frequencies. I do admit sometimes they can have some higher frequencies, possibly going up to 10 or 15 hertz. However, the mo majority of the time I've seen active volcanoes, for example, Mount Stromboli or Mount Etna, let's say uh, the Vinyaminoff caldera in Alaska, let's say Mount Redoubt, let's say even Mount St. Helens, or let's say some of the low-frequency earthquakes possibly were related to uh, magmatic activity or gas release from magma at Lassen Peak. They all, all of them, have dominant frequencies below 5 hertz. So usually if you do not see any dominant frequencies below 5 hertz, it is not really a seismic event, but there are exceptions to that. I do have to say there are some exceptions to that. Sometimes I have seen high-frequency earthquakes with some very dominant high frequencies and barely any low frequencies at all. So, but that's still that's still there. But you, in order to see if this is volcanic or harmonic tremor, you'd have to take a look at some of the neighboring seismic stations in the area. You could also go on volcanoes.usgs.gov. They do have some webby quarters of some stations in the area. You could just compare that to if you want. But we're going to take a look at some of the earthquakes. Notice we have a high-frequency earthquake right here. Surprisingly, not going below 1.7 hertz. Really, nothing on this station goes below 1.7 hertz. Notice that? Even this, even this real earthquake does not go below 1.7 hertz. So if there's any low frequency harmonic volcanic tremor, we definitely see it at about the 5 hertz line, it being recorded by the station. But we see this strange background activity starting at about 8 hertz. Way, way too high. And plus the frequencies are not indicative of any such event. But still, you never know. You never know. We have an earthquake there. Earthquake, very tiny possible earthquake there. Definitely another earthquake right there. Another one right here. So we do see that there are some earthquakes that are not being reported, obviously. Clear P and S wave, I'm going to say is, uh, I'm going to say right about there. P wave, S wave, right about there. Something like that. Uh, we got two quakes right there. All of them are very tiny. So we definitely have more than 18 earthquakes. Then going forward, there's a little bit of space of time where no earthquakes were occurring at Mount Hood. Then we see another breakout of seismicity occurring as part of an earthquake swarm. And then down here, it gets really interesting. Check this out, guys. Let's go to the spectrogram, zoom out a little bit. We have one earthquake there, and then a little bit of a rapid-fire swarm at Mount Hood, which personally, I mean, it's probably happened before, but I've never seen this, ever, at Mount Hood. Ever, ever. Whenever even there's an earthquake swarm of, let's say, six or seven earthquakes, they're usually very spaced in time. They never occurred this close together, so I found that very, very intriguing. 
multiple earthquakes. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven within what, only a few minutes right there? And then we got another one right there, another one right there, and possibly another one right there. And then we got two more right there, possibly an aftershock right there. Then another earthquake, and then one, two, definitely three. Let's see if that's a third one right there, right here. Yep, secondary increase, yeah, that's definitely another earthquake. And more earthquakes, and then we got that strange activity. Look at that, very, very strange activity on TIMB. Then we have another earthquake right here. Clear PNS wave arrivals, definitely an earthquake. And let's move forward, shall we? And then we have another earthquake right here, guys. So a good sized increase in seismicity at Mount Hood in Northern Oregon, which I find to be extremely intriguing. That's not an earthquake in my opinion. Yeah, definitely not an earthquake. Looks like a calibration pulse of some kind. We have another earthquake right here. Clear PNS wave arrivals, definitely another earthquake. Uh, let's see here. Another tiny earthquake right there, I believe. That's slightly emergent. That might be a glacier earthquake. I'm not too sure about that. As of the most recent data, and that was just a few hours ago, we still are seeing a very, very tiny, 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 I'm talking about probably almost negative magnitude earthquakes, just as of the past few hours, as of 7.39 p.m. Pacific Time, July 8, 2019. But really, the last one we've seen was at about, here, let me scroll down right here. Let's see, 124 UTCs, or UTC would be 5 if it's Pacific Time. So that's about 624 p.m. Pacific Time. So it's been over an hour since we have seen a small earthquake at Mount Hood. But still, seismicity does seem to be ongoing at Mount Hood with the strongest seismicity occurring right here. Very intriguing, guys. And I will do an analysis post, actually, because it is somewhat of a good-sized swarm for Mount Hood. So I will do an analysis post on this probably tomorrow under my Quake Swarm page under Seismic Events drop-down menu. So just keep an eye out for that. Also, just one last thing, guys. Now, we usually see a lot of malfunctions when uh, dealing with the seismic stations at Yellowstone, and especially other places, too. I mean, guys, they're made by humans. They see malfunctions all the time. But I found something very intriguing. Let's go to YLA. Doesn't that look like a steamboat eruption? Very similar on YLA, but it's on the eastern coast of Yellowstone Lake. But the thing is, we also see it on YTP here as well. However, just by looking at the webby quarters, let's go here. Notice how it starts. Let's see, there's the 2030 line. So that's about, let's say it starts at about 2016, right? 2016 UTC, right? So let's go to YTP. It should start at 2016 UTC. 20, no, we see it start at about 2006 UTC, about 10 minutes earlier. And we'll take a closer look at this in the Seismic Program Swarm. But do you remember what I told you guys about seismic waves? I don't care what anyone says out there. Imagine throwing a rock in a pond. Do the ripples stop at certain parts? No. Ripples go away from the rock dropped in the pond in a perfect circular fashion, right? Uh, almost always. I mean, actually, yes, always. That's a matter of physics. Seismic waves travel in the same fashion. If a seismic event occurs, even a negative magnitude earthquake can be detected on seismic stations around Yellowstone Caldera. Yes, they have been before. Now, so we should see the seismic waves, which travel very, very fast and can travel tens of miles within only a few seconds. Yes, guys, seismic waves can travel that fast. Don't just trust me. Go Google it. Go check it out about seismic waveform propagation. Very interesting, guys. So we do see possible steamboat eruption down there. Eh. <laughs> Why don't we go take a look at something, shall we? Let's take data from borehole 208, YLA, and YTP, and get to the bottom of this and see if this really is a real seismic event. Even if it was a surface event, still the seismic waves should react the same, just like they do with steamboat eruptions, which show up on YNM and YNR. They show up basically at the same exact time. So let's go check it out. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Just so you guys know, here is the, oh, it shows now. Okay, I guess I'm going to go back, go forward. Okay, 2019, 0708 at 1946 Pacific time. And that is the most recent data right down here. YLA, just so you guys know that I have the same date. Because, you know, some people out there are probably like, huh? Backwards, forwards. 
1948 and 1946. Four hole 208. Let's go. Oh, sorry guys. Backwards, forwards. 2019 0708 1946. So it's all the same date and time frame. Same exact freaking date and time frame. Now I want you guys to know, notice on YLA right here, we see that strange seismic event right here. Kind of looks like the Hawaii spasmodic tremor events, doesn't it? Very, very similar actually. Kind of the same shape, same form. But it's not. You want to know why? If it was, then it would propagate away from the source just like the spasmodic tremor events in Hawaii do and show basically up at the same exact times on every seismic station, give or take like 10 seconds or so. Should not be more than like 10, 20 seconds at max. I mean, even for a close seismic station. Uh, but you can see this right here. You can see the waveforms. Very strange. Very, very odd. I thought this was some type of hydrothermal eruption or some type of hydrothermal event, but then I went over to YTP. Now let's look at when this starts on YLA, shall we? Let's go out on a limb and say it starts right here, 2019, right? Let's say it starts, because that's when it right, uh, starts to increase, right at about 2019 UTC. So let's go to 2019 UTC on YTP. 2019 UTC. Wow, okay. 2019 UTC is all the way over here. Yeah. Zooming all the way out. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. If this really, really was some type of seismic event or anything occurring under the ground or even at the surface, why would it show on YTP first? Does that even make any sense at all? And look at some of these spikes. These do not show any clear PNS wave arrivals and the frequencies are too strange. I mean, regardless of whether these are earthquakes or not, you can see that this starts at about 2006, you notice? But on YLA, it starts at about 2019. Notice that? Right at about 2019 in this area right here. So whether or not it occurred close to YTP or close to YLA, the times are way, way off. So we know that it is not occurring underground. Otherwise, it would only take a few seconds, no matter the depth. No matter the depth, it should only take a few seconds, not minutes, but seconds to reach YLA from YTP or YTP from YLA. Now let's go to 2006 or 2019 in the size program swarm for borehole 208. All right, which is just to the north on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. At about 2019, we do see some of that strange low frequency activity, which we do see on the boreholes pretty much all the time. Still don't know what it's caused by. If it was volcanic tremor, pretty sure the area would have erupted by now because it's been showing it for years and years on end, except during the winter time, which is very interesting. 2019, we do not see any increase at all, basically. So let's go to 2006. At 2006, we basically don't see anything at all. So I thought that was very interesting, guys. So just keep an eye out for what's going on. Let's check the earthquake map and see if anything else has occurred since I started recording, because you know that the type of thing happens all the time. Just some more quakes in California. A lot of quakes still occurring, guys. Uh, in the coastal volcanic field as part of an ongoing earthquake swarm, which volcanoes.usgs.gov under coastal volcanic field put out the first ever alert posting. It's still normal and green, but they put out the first ever alert posting for coastal volcanic field. The first one ever. So it is seeing a good size earthquake swarm with a seismic activity, which means no seismic activity much at all, where the magma chamber is. So we got strong seismic activity to the southeast along that fault zone that caused the 7.1, the little bit of a swarm just on the tip of that. Then we have a big blank spot right where the magma chamber is at the coastal volcanic field, but just to the north-northwest of the magma chamber, we're seeing an increase in earthquakes as part of an ongoing earthquake swarm as well. So I hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I will see you later.